What's going on YouTube? James Prigione coming at you. It's May 6th. Uh, it's a little chilly today, but I'm just going to come at you with an update I haven't updated for a little while. going to bring you along on how everything's coming, how everything's looking. Um, step back. This is uh, our entrance to the garden. As you can see, we have now we have the uh, grapevines growing up each pole of the entrance. So hopefully, eventually they'll be growing over and hanging over the top. So they're opening up and starting to grow along the side, which is looking good. And then you can see the things that have been in here for a while. It's starting to get pretty big. The baskets and everything. Uh, everything's looking. It's coming along. It's supposed to rain in a couple days, so everything should like that. We're we're excited about that. This cell is also looking pretty good. You can see we had some some cases where we had the cabbage white butterfly come and eat some of our things. But the thing is that we planted a decent amount of uh, uh, mustard greens in our cells. So it seems like the cabbage white butterflies, one of their favorite things are the mustard greens, the big greeny leafy greens. So one of the first things they went for were our mustard greens. So we lost some of those, but like in this cell, but that doesn't matter because we have so many and we don't even... Those aren't our top uh, vegetable in here. You can see everything else is growing nicely still. The onions, peas are growing nice, carrots are loving in here. Uh, some cabbages, some spinaches. So, the beans are looking a little yellow, but I think that's because it was a little early for them. But they're coming out, they're still putting their true leaves out like you can see over here but everything's still coming along and I'll bring you where the mushrooms were this is the cell the mushrooms were in this is where all the mushrooms were all in here so you can see we didn't do anything to mushrooms we let them live out their life cycle send out their spores and then they died off naturally and that and now the soil under here is just still full of that hyphae that mycorrhizae association so you can tell the plants really like it They're, they've past couple days they've just blown up and now they're just they're in that really accelerated growth I'll show you guys some how many apple trees we got also too you can pick them out here here's one apple tree you got over here another one right here uh, more apple trees um, here's another apple tree it's a big pretty big one and then another apple tree right next to that and then another apple tree. You can see again, this one's pretty dense. We have the sticks in here for some of the peas to, to grow up. This was planted dense also. We've been coming through and pulling some of the mustard greens. They provide, pull them and eat them. They provide nice shade for things like carrots to grow under, which have been thriving. Also lettuce to grow under. Because they're obviously not, they obviously don't like the straight sun because they're not canopy plants. Here's another apple tree growing through right uh, along the things, it's starting to canopy up over the stuff. Another apple tree back here, growing with those things. So, that was a pretty lot so far. Bring you back to where the greenhouse used to be. You can see how that looks. Things are getting large. Some spinach down there. Uh, giant mustard greens, lettuces. They come in here and eat mustard greens every day. Things like this size. Just grab one of those and grab a piece of lettuce with it. That piece was a little small. But... And then you mix those together because the mustard greens are pretty sweet and lettuce is bitter. And then it's a nice little snack. So, as of. Sorry, I'm eating. As of uh, May 1st, we were eating our first radishes, first strawberries, and we've been eating mustard greens every day. So, as of May 1st, we've been eating out of the garden. We'll be eating out of the garden every day. Not all of our meals are and anything like that, but still, we're getting those fresh nutrients still alive, fresh, just picked out of the garden. Here's those purple bean plants. Um, they have like the black, shiny, black beans. They look so beautiful, and it's doing all right. It's feeling a little crispy, actually. Another one over here, putting out its true leaves, looking good. Next to it, we have some tomato plants putting out their true leaves. Uh, I believe that's a little small cherry tomato behind it. Another tomato plant over here. Growing next to some peas, some nitrogen fixers. 
some lettuce, so nice little dense poly polyculture in there again. Then we have the rocks. We're just leaving the rocks around it to create little microclimates, help leave the heat in here, make it a little warmer at night. And uh, we've got pl things planted everywhere, so things are really coming up. They're starting to come up at least. Everywhere throughout, everywhere you see these uh, brown patches, there's things planted. So there's some coming up right there. This bunch of radishes. The strawberry patch is just blown up. The, it's put out a lot of um, flowers, so we're hoping to get some decent amount of strawberries this year. It looks pretty hopeful. And uh, another apple tree. This one's looking great in here. It's loving it in here. And then there's some onions also in here. Help the tear pests. There's actually right behind the apple tree, there's tomatoes. We got beans planted throughout here. Peas. Another tomato plant back there. You can't really see it, but this patch is coming up. Some things slowly, but it's coming along. Here's a comfrey. Someone sent us from Facebook. And back up a little. This is our five grafted apple tree. And we got the comfrey underneath of it to for as a dynamic accumulator. So we'll just chop and drop with the comfrey right below it. Just be feeding the um, the tree, the nutrients that it can't mine deep from the soil itself. And then back here, another patch of things coming up. I'll bring you over to the small place where we, my brother built a cold frame. You can see how well everything's coming along. There's can't count how many potatoes are in here. One, there's like ten in here. Uh, we just planted the whole potatoes. So corn. And then some onions, so we got some potatoes, They're really getting large, grown well. Uh, lettuce grown with that, and this is just, just along with the other thing. We started off with that cold frame over here, and we started off in that pioneered along these plants. Once they got to a good height, we lifted it off and then redid the same thing and started over there. And now we have warmer weather plants like tomatoes and such grown in there, nice polyculture of tomatoes. So we'll just move that system along and continue doing that. Back in the patch here, nothing too exciting growing. Just polycultures of beans, some radish, looks like peas, carrots, some different colored lettuce, different kinds of lettuce and such. Uh, same thing going on in the back, a bunch of carrots and stuff. We love carrots, our dog loves carrots, so that works well and well. Like I said, this is the cold frame that I'll bring along. You can't really see, covered in water. It's kind of insane. I'll show you what it looks like from uh, from the back here. This is where we, where we started back there. In the front, that's where the frame was. It's our potato patch. I'll show you back there. It's another potato patch we were just at. It's the cold frame's got tomatoes and such in it. Uh, this is that patch with corn and radishes and stuff. This is another patch with lettuces and beans and you can tell these are all doing well together these beans lettuces and carrots that that little polyculture seems like it really likes each other another apple tree back here growing uh, I'm not sure what this is but we haven't planted everywhere so they're, they're, they're definitely important they have like these purple uh, stalks on them they look really nice there's another one right down here so another dense one a lot of carrots again we love carrots uh, look and see how many the uh, flowers of strawberries are putting out. They're really, they're really just going hard. They've been sticking straight up like that. The leaves are beginning huge, and they're still just putting out more leaves every day and more, more flowers. This is what it looks like over here. See the lettuces and stuff thrive, and this patch has done real well. This patch we had a little more mulch on, so it's done a little better. Some of the. Uh, brassicas and stuff you can see like this cabbage maybe it's just the seed was a better seed but this one's doing real well everything's just uh looking pretty green nasturtiums i love these they're just planted everywhere more back here and uh again this is where these cabbages are, are looking well maybe hey maybe these are the jersey cabbages that's why they're doing so well that would make sense so, stuff's doing pretty well. I'll take you guys back to that potato patch, which is doing pretty pretty well also. 
bunch of potatoes and then everything that goes well with potatoes just a little polyculture through this just little log in here you know just for a little habitat for things for us to lean on a couple of corns coming up some radish uh, potatoes more potatoes potatoes throughout we have like uh, cucumbers and zucchini in here so here's one or maybe that's a sunflower so that uh raccoons and stuff don't get at our corn because they're spiky it helps keep them away another native american technique over here looks a little denser we can't i came through the other day and planted more cucumbers and um things like that and watermelon and the ground covers over here is like our little flax patch, which is what I like to call it because I planted flax throughout it. And uh, there's cucumber, watermelon, cantaloupe, beans, nasturtiums. So it's another polyculture over there. Into the greenhouse, things are doing real well. This is greenhouse is pretty much dedicated to tomatoes right now, and every all the polyculture that goes along with tomatoes and help bringing them up. And so there's uh, you can see his tomatoes here. There's corn, uh, tomatoes here, there's carrots next to that, which do well with tomatoes. And there's a little onion right next to that, which will also help tomatoes out a little. And then basil next to that, so that's kind of just like that format of helping out the tomatoes. Help them keep away their pests and such. Here's a marigold, so that's also a nice companion with the tomato. Cucumbers, we got beans back there, that bean is looking nice. But everywhere near this tomatoes tomatoes here and these are all or these are all, uh, heirloom a mixed heirloom mixed heirlooms just a uh, bunch of different kinds some woman sent us very nice for from her church nasturtiums uh, cucumber bean more basil more tomato over here so I mean if I can not show you all them there's tomato everywhere and they're all in those little cool polycultures there's more tomato over there this is where we've been harvesting the radishes and such from. You can see the side of this like must be a beet or something. No radishes yet because when they're ready we've been eating them because they're so good. But uh, we had some radishes, some of the uh, strawberries we eat out there. You can see how big the carrots are getting. Everything in here is really liking it. This uh, will help pioneer along all these plants then once they're nice and big. We'll move this over and start it again somewhere else. Help bring up more tomatoes. And uh, I'll give you a quick peek of the cool culture bed. It's, looking, it's doing well also. So, it's coming along. I'm not going to hop in there. This video I know is already getting long. But you can see it's planted densely. Things are coming up. Hugo culture is, is doing well. We built another bed behind us. We built that one on contour though. I might do a couple of videos and show you how we did that excuse me so everything's not doing great though we do have a blueberry plant that looks horrendous we accidentally uh well i accidentally brought it out a little early so we didn't harden it off enough we'll do that next time we'll learn from that little mini hoop culture that we built back there so this is some of the smaller trees i'm not sure what this kind of tree is but it's actually flowering which is nice people get little pieces of fruit out of it it's a uh, cherry tree so that's nice cherry trees flowering we'll give you the view from the back things are coming along we're eating fresh out of the garden fresh nutrients uh, thanks for following along guys we have the greenhouse open today just to help aerate it get it used to it because things are getting a little bigger in there so we want them to get used to the normal climate out here so almost like hardening off thanks for following along guys we'll give you guys an update when we have something else coming along Thanks for watching. If you did follow the whole thing, I know it was long, but we haven't updated in a while. We've been doing a bunch of those Google Hangouts and stuff, and it's been a lot of fun. We've learned from so many people, and we just have realized how much we don't know. So we just got to get back to studying and learning more because we've just learned from so much from those people, and we appreciate people coming on and teaching us everything. So thanks for following along, guys. If you have any comments, any ideas, tips, tricks, hints, let us know. Thanks, guys. James Prigioni's out.